Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon to everybody around the world. Welcome back to another One Piece video featuring your girl, Uta. Get ready for a very, very spicy deck profile for OP06, in which this deck is doing quite well in. Let alone, it's very difficult to deal with when you are not ready, and it can build a board very, very fast, let alone have a big hand size. Uta is a leader in which, if you don't know, if you're new to One Piece or you just want to get into this deck as well, as long as you attach one Dawn to your leader and attack once per turn, what you can do is you can look at the top card of your deck, just the top one. If it is a film typing, like I at the bottom here, you can add it to your hand for free, which is really, really good. If it's not a film, such as like a kid or like an Izo or what have you, it goes to the bottom of the deck. Now, this allows Uta to get a very, very big hand size rather, rather quickly let alone you have Nami in the deck that does the exact same thing, except for she has an on-play effect, and when attacking, you spend one Dawn. You can do the same leader effect as Uta, except for Nami reveals the top three cards, then you choose one film. But overall, this is a very solid deck into the format. It gives a lot of decks trouble due to the fact that this deck can go wide so fast, such as Sakazuki, for instance. Sometimes you can, you can flood the board before they have enough answers to deal with everything. We also have access to A-Cost Kid, which a lot of decks right now have trouble dealing with, unless you are Moria or Sakazuki, and they have Ice Ages readily available to deal with this guy. Perona also has access to it too, but generally not as much as the other two. Now, we've gained access to new cards, such as Mihawk, which came out in Structure Deck 12, the most recent one. This is not a film card, but for this deck, it's pretty spicy. When you play down a kid, Kid can play it on Mihawk from your hand, right? Essentially. When Mihawk hits the board, his effect can go off, and there therefore he can play down Brook. Brook would come down rested. Brook can then play down a Nami, or play down an Uta, play down an Usopp. So essentially you get four bodies on board for eight Dawn, which is kind of scary, especially, again, for a deck that goes wide really, really quick and has the hand size to counter out of these, most of these attacks if need be. And then we also have access to cards such as Blacklight, which no other deck can use unless you're playing an Uta leader. Now, Blacklight allows you to rest the, how you say, like, the most annoying blockers, you know, like Borsalino, Sabo, or Queen, when you need to. Because you will run into Queen into decks like Raju and all that sort of thing. Sabo and Borsalino are in every single Black deck, so, yep, obviously you need answers for that. And Blacklight allows you to rest them that way you can get in with your swings with I'm Invincible, with your kids, and all that sort of thing. Now, speaking of which, this is another card for Uta that allows your leader to restand once you spend the Dawn to do so. So in other words, you could attack for 8 Dawn, or 7, 6, whatever, spend 3 Dawn for I'm Invincible, and restand her. Which is really, really good. Now, there is another card in this deck, which I have included for OP06, which is actually really, really good into Green Kid, which you guys might have not considered. We're not playing Dofi today. We are going to be adding in Zoro. Zoro is very, very strong in OP06 if this man can survive one turn. And in a deck such as Green Uta, you have access to Kid, Uta, and the 7 cost Luffy blocker. Therefore, Zoro has a lot of walls to sit behind to allow him to actually survive a turn. And if he does, he can attack three times. So in other words, you can make this guy 11k. Attack into Kid, which will force them to give you three the 4k counter to make this man survive. And you can do this three times in a single turn, let alone your other swings for your other characters that are on board, which is pretty spooky. But overall, we're going to dive into a couple games today, and I'll see you all in a split second. Oh, this would be perfect. Starting off the first game, playing into a Yamato. I mean, what? why not? I don't know how many of these we're going to see today, but we're going to try our best. This is a fan favorite deck right now in OP06, let alone my favorite deck to play in OP06 right now. It's very strong. It's going to be very difficult to beat, depending on your hand. And of course, we had the mulligan because we need 2k counters or blockers here in the early game. Otherwise, things are just they're not going to go well. All right. Let's go ahead and go five to face. Normally, I would activate the leader ability on any other deck, but this one particularly, you gotta have those 2Ks or blockers ready. Because I am not ready to take, take two damage for free right now. We gotta survive long enough to be able to get Kid on board and or Zoro, what have you. 
Ezo is a problem, but what am I going to do? Go up to five. Potentially, we could just go ahead and go 6k. That's not what we need. Mm. We could play down Brook. Brook can drop the Uta for us, at the very least. That way we have two blockers on board. And a body to swing for the following turn. Which isn't bad. But we have one blocker now. Having two doesn't really do us a whole lot. Okay, now, now it does. Okay, it would have been better to have another blocker, right? My bad, I'm sorry. We'll counter out. Another seven swing. I don't want to, but we have to counter this one as well. Because they get to have the option of Hody Jones next turn, and we're already in trouble. If we were to take that hit, I think we would lose. Seven Dawn. Let's go ahead and go to 7k here. What do you do? Just take the hit. You, you'd be fine. If you take the hit, you play down Hody, you go down to one life. Smart. Good job. How about this one? Darn it, man. Oh, my leader ability has not been my favorite today, apparently. Alright, let's get down a blocker. Which is probably going to get rested here anyway, so... And I did make a misplay. I should have probably attached the other Dawn to Uta when I swung there. Therefore, we'd at least got one damage in, maybe. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, they have five Dawn left, so they're, they're going to play a Momo here to bounce that back to top of life. There's no other reason to play that right now. So I think we're good. That must mean they don't have a Hody, or they're just trying to do a Hody this turn. Either way. We might be okay to drop down Zoro. Because we have enough counter in hand between the Izo, the Mihawk, and the Chopper to protect ourselves even if he wants to swing with the Momonosuke. Let's go 5 here. Interesting. I figured he would actually guard at that, to be fair. Alright, so he does have a blocker here. There's a Yamato. Not what I expected. Another issue. Hmm. Do we just take this and not care about it? Just save the 2k counter for this swing instead? It's probably better, right? Otherwise we lose. Duh. Alright, Zoro. Let's put in some work here, bud. We didn't see Luffy today. We did not see a kid. Well, we got there anyway, even versus the Yamato. It's crazy. Two life left. Unless one of those is like a Beji or an Amaru. Amaru? I think we'll be fine. I don't think we need to go higher than 9, realistically. Because we also have I'm Invincible too. So, let's just go 9k to face. This effect is so cracked, man. It's so good. Let's do it again. Are we good? And uh, that's game, boys. Four cards in hand. We have to go higher than nine here, just a little bit. Nice. I'm not even going to lie. I haven't seen a Raiju in a little while, to be fair. I've been running into nothing but Gekko Morias and Yamatos the past couple days. I've actually seen more Sakazuki than I have seen into Raiju. And you know what? Perona is another one I rarely see anymore for some reason. But let's see what we can do here in this matchup. The good thing about this, they don't really have a way to remove Kid as well. Unless they're playing with Red Rock. I've ran into a little bit of uh, Raju that actually have Red Rock, which is kind of surprising to me. But usually Kid kind of gets to stick around for a long time. They can get down Ichiji on board and minus 2k. It doesn't really necessarily matter. He's swinging 7 to a 6. We got the 2k. We're chilling. So. Yeah, Raju is not really a problem in the I feel like we just stomped them out, even though they, she got staged, but we'll see. We, we do want to counter early, though, generally. Got a blocker here early game, too. Hmm. Let's go six. Hey, let's take that, Brooke. 
That's perfect timing, too. Because I was just going to play the Nami down and do the effect, but now we can play Brook and Nami. And already go wide here on board. I don't mind taking a couple hits, just not too many. Because we only have one 2k counter here. I'm not going to give up our, our three drop Uta. I don't think that she'll swing with Yanji. Never mind. I lied. My bad. Hey, another kid. Let's go. So here's the seven drop. Oh, wow. You do attack here. Crazy. Well, we have a Mihawk. Mm, let's go five to face. Yanji is rested, so he doesn't get any value here as a blocker. Let's try to get cards out of hand. You may be wondering why we didn't use Nami's leader effect, or Nami's effect. We have Luffy in hand, so... I'd rather get the Luffy down and the Uta blocker instead. Uh, do we need this? Do we want to save Nami here? I think they'll kill her, regardless. Just because I think he might, or they might have, um... I forgot what the blue-haired guy name is. Wow, Aniji. She might have Aniji, so... Regardless if we save the Nami or not, if we got rid of the event, and then they pop the Niji down, that would feel bad. Alright, 7k to face. We'll take this hit. Another Mihawk. Which isn't bad, because now we have 6k to, or 6, 6k counter in hand. English is hard today. So you get the draw two. Three Dawn left to play with. They don't Dawn up at all, so it just, just leads me to believe they're about to Niji my Nami. Go ahead and counter out. Yep. Alright, so Nami goes bye-bye. Okay, good job. But we're already into our 9 dawn turn, so it doesn't necessarily matter too much, because we can just play it back down. Like, that just seems silly. No effect. We need the dawn for the kid. And again, we're chilling. And our hand is still pretty cracked. We have another kid to come down in case we need it. We'll attack with Luffy and just restand it at the end of the turn by dropping down the event here due to our Uta effect, which will allow us to restand in like another film unit on board. Come on, one more. Okay, all right. Go five to face. Let's get rid of backlight here. Because we're not really, uh, you know, threatened by Yanji, I guess. And that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. Minus 2k to that, yep. If she decides to dawn up, like does the dawn right here, she could get the kid, I think. Oh yeah, never mind, she doesn't have to. I forgot about the, the minus 2, even though I just said that. That's crazy. I still think we're chilling though. Another seven. We have one more 2k left. So how do you do this? I don't think she can break through kid here, so this game might be over. Get rid of that. Three Dawn left to play with. Go six again. But what do you do with other two Dawn? Because we can just block with Luffy here. Yeah. Nice. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're going to dive into another game here. Come at you guys with Green Uta playing into Gecko Moria. Thankfully, Sindri didn't give him anything here in trash. But in any case, we're taking the Luffy. This is going to be a very, very hard matchup. Moria is a problem, not only to me, but to a lot of decks right now. But we have the option to go wide. If we can get more units on board faster than Moria if we draw right. So we'll see how this goes. We do have Mihawk in hand, but we don't have a Brook. We don't have a Zoro here. He probably will play the Perona from Trash, so I'll have to discard a card. Yep. Mm, I guess we'll get rid of a 2k and we'll take the hit. Okay, so there is an I'm Invincible, which is nice. It might have to come in handy here. 
some backlight. All right, let's go six to face. And we have three down to play with that we can actually play down the blocker if need be. I think that's our only option. Ooh, never mind. So we get a brook. So this is how cool this is. I mentioned this to you guys in the opening, but if you Mihawk into Brook and into Uta, that's three Dawn for three bodies on board, which is pretty insane. And in this scenario, we could discard a card to restand the Brook with our Uta effect, which is kind of nutty. Um, Backlight, they have Borsalino and Sabo, but that's more of a later thing. I think we can get past that with the kit. So now he actually has to remove my units on board, otherwise he's going to take some damage next turn. He threw an Ice Age away last time for the uh, Perona to hit the board for the leader effect. This. So we got himself a Suru off the brand new. Three Don left to play with. Two Ice Ages, two Borsalinos in trash, one Absalom. Which isn't bad, but he has to do a Don Minus here to remove the Utha blocker if he decides to play him. And I don't think he can do that unless he had a greater eruption, but. Sindri going huge. Um. I guess we just take this. We have to give a 2k to something, but I don't think that's worth it. So Genesis will be helpful to draw into potentially another Luffy. Five here. There's a Brook. Give him the Brook here. And then I'll work on clearing board a little bit. Get rid of the Sindri. I don't think he'd give me the Perona. Let's go ahead and do Genesis first. Ooh, we get another Uta. We go seven. Okay, this should clear the Perona. And yes, I understand he can just bring it back next turn and make me discard a card. I get it. But at least they can't attack me that turn. Nice. Take the chopper. Alright, so that's good, because now we know the 2k is out of his hand, and the minus effect from Suru can't be applied to anything, because it's in trash now. Nah, we're good here. So Mihawk and Brook will act as pseudo-blockers here. At least I would assume so. And if that's the case, we don't take life, which is awesome. But we still have five life of his to go through. The four and then the zero. So another Suru. Which he probably drew for his turn here. Leader effect. Absalon pops the Uta. Yep. But is it worth countering from hand here? We would have to get rid of the Uta and Chopper, so we'll just let this go instead. There's 5k. Oh, this will counter out, actually. Because we can actually crack back with Mihawk and get rid of the brand new. Oh, that's nice. 8 Dawn. Let's get the Luffy on board. I know it seems silly. But we don't have enough for Kid to be relevant here. And this way we can attack with Leader as well and draw a card. Or we can't draw a card. But he has 6k to face, right? Gave me another 2k. Nice. I thought that was going to be an Ice Age or something. That would have sucked. At least next turn, we can drop down the Zoro, and he'll be protected by at least one blocker on board. Unless he's got another Ice Age. Let's counter out of this as well. I know it seems silly, but it's another body on board that I can attack with for one Dawn investment. 
So it warrants a life or it warrants, you know, a card from hand. He's going to play Moria now. Otherwise, he would attach Dawn with Leader and um, Absalon to get the, the kill AOs on board, right? That's just the only way it would work. Because you remember, there's two Borsalinos in Trash, so Moria would get back one Borsalino and probably a brand new. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Oh, okay, never mind. I guess I'll take the Rabluchi. That means he's being very aggressive with three cards in hand. So Luffy will go here, unfortunately. So we get another kid. Kid should at least be able to stall an attack or so. Let's go six. I think we have to apply pressure because you can just get Absalon back. Can put this on board as well with the Nami effect. But let's go face first. Men's risking it all over there. He thinks he's so safe. Yeah, it's not worth it right now. But restanding. Five cards in hand. He took the 5k swing last turn with Bro or, sorry, this turn with Brooke. He might not have enough Dawn for this. Or not Dawn, sorry. Counter. Can we get there, boys? There's no shot we win this. Ooh, let's go. That was close. So I'm not gonna lie, this match is very challenging. Not just for Uta, like I hate playing into red purple law on any deck. It feels like nothing ever sticks on board. But like playing this with a Yamato or like a Perona, this man just says you can't have fun. He removes all the cards. It's just, it's just not a fun time. But in something like this, all they have to do is see Gamma Knife or a Gordon. And they're chilling and they can remove like the kid and all that sort of thing. But and the fact that they can just play down and raise you after raise you to constantly refill hand size is, is pretty nutty. Law is doing really, really good right now in OPO6. He only gets more cracked in OPO7. So. We're gonna try our best. Let's get down a Brook here. That way we can get down a Nami. This will force him to actually have to use removal. And hopefully he does. That way it's less removal to be able to use to target my Zoro and my kid here. I don't really care necessarily if Nami sticks here to board. Because we'll have two attacks in the following turn. Because he can't remove both. Oh, and he runs Fire Fist. Forgot about that. That's crazy. All right, 8K to face. We gotta take the hit. We get another 2K, which is really good here. Nami's gone. What do you play here? Either a Zoro or a Penguin, right? Okay, didn't expect that. That I'm okay with. Zoro would have been a problem because we had to deal with a 2K, you know? What do we do here? Six Dawn left. Let's go, let's go seven to face. Well, there's a Mihawk we won't get. One damage in. Do we just go seven here as well? All right, so we'll go six and save three for Uta. I feel like it might be a misplay actually to play her down right now. But if she can stick on board, we can actually do something pretty good next turn. So we go up to 8 Dawn. But Kid can't be rested for the turn. Oh, you... Mm. I don't know why. Part of me just didn't expect it. And that's my bad. I should have been paying attention more so. It's always when like you forget about the law, the law gets you. Or when you're prepared for the law, the law gets you. It's just it's a lose-lose, I feel. And had to take away my Zoro there and a 2k counter. That does suck. Well, I guess forget that idea. Let's go 7k in this. Get yeah, I'm invincible, which is pretty solid. I should be able to get this. I'm sorry if you guys hear the birds outside. There's not much I can do about it, you know. Just think of an ambience noise. Goodness. It's a nice day here, okay? So we'll get rid of that. 
We've got six Dawn left to play with. Let's go ahead and go attacking for Brook here. I want to see if we can actually force the law. So let's go ahead and nine. This way he'd have to give me two 2k counters and a 1k. If he gives me law, that's ideal. He might just pass it up and give me the life, but if that's the case, we do have Kid for the following turn. Nice, let's go boys. Let's go ahead and attack with this as well. I'm going all in. Like, we are just going all in. Because remember, he can only can remove one unit at a time, usually with his leader effect. So, he'll have to attack into the other one. No, no, we're not going to bother with that. They're going to act as pseudo-blockers here anyway, because he's going to run his units into them. Six Dawn for him to play with. He's got quite a bit of cards in hand, so I do potentially expect the Zoro to come down. Let's give this a 2k. There's no way I'm going to take this hit. Mihawk's not going to be a value right now. I've got two units on board. Five left. He can't minus anything unless he plays a you know plays a card first. So if he decides to be offensive, he can't be defensive here. Nice. So it's either one or the other. Although Queen is a problem, because it has two blockers to deal with on board here. So I need, like, I need a Hody Jones, but we don't run Hody here in this build. And part of me, is, you know, really wants to for moments like this. But we might need to be able to draw a backlight or I guess we just play Kid here, right? It's 5k. We can counter this out. Because he won't swing with Law. Otherwise, that'd be kind of silly, right? Oh, he's thinking about it. He's definitely thinking about it. Wow, okay, cool. We'll counter this as well. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any 2Ks for our kid. We might actually just have to try going for game here. We need to do two damage. Queen can only block one attack. We have enough for invincible. I'm trying to think. If we just go... We go 5. He either gives me the counter, takes the damage, or blocks with Queen. And then if he blocks with Queen, we win the game. Okay, gives me a Beppo. Is it worth donning up Zoro? Not Zoro, but Brook, though. So we're at... Essentially, we have 3 life. 7. We have to go 8, right? Because Queen's it. Yeah, we have to go 8 here. Because bare minimum, if he blocks with Queen, he needs a 3k counter. Okay. Hmm. Can we get there, boys? He has six cards in hand, there's no way I get through. Uh oh. Hold on. Dang, we tried. Let's go ahead and do the thing. Restand the the blocker up. We still have three life here. He's got four Don to play with. As as long as both of these these life cards are counter, we'll be fine. Like we'll be okay. Oh my goodness. Alright. Now I think we're dead. We tried. Oh wait, no, we're good, we're good. We're blocking this one. This one hits me. 2k? That's 1k. Alright, so he's saving a Dawn for Zoro in the back. We got the counter. We win. That was so close. Sorry, buddy. And uh, a good game. Two cards in hand. I guess we just go face. I just want to see what we we're going to get. There's the Luffy, though. We needed that, like, way earlier. I think if we got the Luffy on curve, or in time, we wouldn't probably be in this position we are in now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to dive into our last game for the day when it comes to Uta. I've actually been playing this deck all morning, and uh, I'm burnt out. I think after the Uta event, and then coming back to play more Uta... For me personally, you know, like I'm spent, 
but it is a fun deck overall. It does really, really well into the metagame, and this Yamato is about to get cooked. Considering all the 2k counters we had in hand right now, and we have uh, our kid and Luffy. We're going for it, boys. We are going for it. But either way, let's dive into this match here. Okay, two dog storms is nice. I know that's not the name, but that's just what I call it. Sorry. But not sorry, I guess. Anyway, drop our blocker on board. Oh, a sugar. You caught me off guard. I give it to you. But, uh, how about this? All of the 2Ks are in the game. Crazy. And another one. Let's go six to face. Let's go seven to face here. At least try to get a damage in. Most of the time, you kind of want to guard out of these as Yamato, especially considering like your opponent's not at three life. So most of your triggers don't work, essentially, if you're playing Wanu package. But he might have like a, uh, a cracker or some sort of big mom variant. Okay. We'll pass it up. I didn't need to like play, play backlight or anything of that nature, so. And I wasn't going to have invincible. It feels awkward before dawn, but it is what it is. Nice. So we get two cards off the double attack. We draw it. We draw for that turn. That's three. Then we get a fourth card with Genesis, and then we get one from Leader Swing. That's a lot. Like that is a lot of cards that we have that your opponent does not right now. It's pretty massive. Let's get down the Luffy with the Uta combo. So now we have two blockers on board, so we, we are ready for Hody. If he wants to go down that way. If not, we have the 2k counters in hand to be fine. Oh. Alright, things got a little spooky, I'm not gonna lie. That is a problem. I was cool with Kid, but Zoro was a problem. Let's get down our Kid. Let's do the thing. Mm, guess we'll play Nami here. I probably should have done like the Luffy into the Nami here, but it'll, it'll be okay. I can't use card action. We have to give a Dawn to the kid. And then go six with leader. There's our Zoro. We will be able to use it. He should be taking a lot of these hits, considering he has four cards, but we'll see. I am willing to give up I'm Invincible or Backlight to restand another uh, film card here if I have to. <clears throat> Alright, so we get the 2k Ezo, which is pretty solid here. Should we go 7? Let's go 7 the face. This should be a damage. And then we will have to restand the Luffy. Otherwise, kid's in trouble. Because Zoro is going to swing three times this turn. So he should be able to clear the kid, at the very least. Alright, so Onami pops my Uta. Which does suck, but we still have a couple blockers left to deal with. We'll get rid of that. Restand this up. I think if he just goes for game here, he'd have a really good chance. But we still have three blockers on board he has to deal with and kid has to go first and we have two two k's in hand my man was stalling me out bro i think we sat here for five minutes or so like not even exaggerating that's crazy but thankfully the power of editing we can skip all over that fair but I don't think, I don't think you can do it. If he goes 9 here, we have the 2k counter. So we counter out of the first Zoro swing. He can't attack again with the Zoro swing. He can't get through Kid with the leader effect. I think if he decided not to have played down the Yamato, not the Yamato, but the Zoro in the scenario, he could have at least killed the Kid with Zoro, right? He could have got through. But we still had Luffy and Nami and then leader for the following turn with I'm Invincible. So I don't think it's going to matter. But we'll just tell him anyway. It'd be what it'd be. Alright. 
Let's get this game over with, and we'll c come back with the deck list, and we'll talk about some of the future changes to Green Uta. But 8k to face. Two cards left. So unless he does veggie me here, or gets like zero cost event, or Maru, I think we're chilling. Let's do the Nami thing. We'll take it out Usopp, I guess. Gives me just like another 1k counter. So he had zero cost in his hand instead. Everyone's getting in today, all right? We're just poking. That's it. Sweet. No Amaru or Veggie. And good game. But either way, let's go ahead and dive back into the deck. Let's see you guys in a split second. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate everybody who decided to make it to the end of the video today, in which was a lot of fun. We actually had to play with the deck, in which we don't typically take out as much. But... When it comes to Green Uta, she is as strong, if not stronger, now in OP06 than she was in OP05. Considering the fact that we've gained access to some of the newer cards, like Mihawk here, and we generally drop the Dofies to go full force into Kid. And Zoro here is an option, which is very, very spooky, especially in a deck like this, when you have multiple blockers. That way he can be protected by something other than like a Rosinante or a Monet or something like that. You actually have big boys to protect you to make sure you stay alive. So there's Luffy and Captain Kid. Now, again, in this metagame, when there's a lot of green decks that are running use this kid, you need a way to remove it. Zoro is a candidate, and I wish and I wish you guys would try him out. Let me know what you think about him inside your green Uta decks. I know a lot of us are still playing with Doflamingo, the 10 cost, which, hey, I can't fault you for because I've been playing with Dofi for a long time in Green Uta, he's very, very good at what he does. I just think that we need to get more pressure, if that makes sense. Normally, Dofi comes down and he rests a lot of things. Well, with everybody running Green Kid, just because he rests this with Dofi doesn't mean his effect is, you know, canceled or nullified or anything. So you need a way to deal with this guy. And Zoro just does that. Attach a couple Dawn, swing 11k into the kid three times is pretty strong. But overall, this has been my new updated list for OP06 when it comes to Uta. We will gain access to new cards in EB, which will be Sanji and Bluno, which will make an inclusion in this list. And it'll probably look something like this just to start off. Now, I'm very, very excited for the new cards because it does change the deck quite a bit. It adds more consistency, such as, you know, the Sanji being a 2K. That way it replaces the Izo. So we have more consistent counters on our leader effect we get access to blue no which is another two cost blocker so into decks like yamato and all that sort of thing we have earlier blockers in game that way we don't have to take the double attack swings all the time which is nice but overall this is what we're looking at here between op06 and film uta and eb so hopefully you guys did enjoy this deck list let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments below Remember to smash the like button so this video can get out there and all that sort of thing. I will catch you guys at Locals this weekend and or at Hampton, Virginia, if you guys are going out there for the big event. In any case, this has been Paul's Blaze. I will catch you guys in the very next video. Stay safe out there. I'll see y'all later.